Hi, welcome to Juice Bar. Today we're gonna mix a Selavi. So today we're gonna mix a Selavi, a cocktail by Saverio Vicari, created in 2015 in London. An over Italian bartender working in London. What? Italian people, they just have to all go and work in London, I guess. By the way, Saverio, the name of one of my best friends. But let's mix this drink. It seems like a good, interesting combination. So let's start with 10 milliliters of freshly squeezed lemon juice. This looks about perfect. Then we go with 10 milliliters of Dom Benedictine. Actually, Dom is not part of the name of this uh, liqueur from France, but they wrote it too big on the label and everybody calls it like that. I think it's just called Benedictine liqueur, blah, 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 liqueur, something, something French. And then 10 milliliters of cinnamon sugar syrup. I bought this one and I'm gonna use it. Nowadays, if I had to really use a cinnamon sugar syrup, probably I will make it myself. Just make a simple syrup and drop in a piece of cinnamon. I think that will be fine. But I bought this one, so let's use it. 10 milliliters. Then 20 milliliters of uh, apple juice I have here some apple juice which I just squeezed so 20 milliliters and last but not least 50 milliliters of cognac I'm using the Remy Martin which is one of the standard cognac one of the best selling cognac I think less spicy than the NSC but a bit more gentle and uh, let's get some ice let's shake oh my god not really good Double strain in our coop. Decoration will be some star anise, but I had enough of star anise. I guess I used it all last time I made a chicharepina, probably. Anyway, so this is a Celavi. Cheers. Ooh, nice smell. Mm. Wow, mm. this is delicious. Holy cow, this is really good. The interplay of the cinnamon, the benedictine and the cognac, it's, it's really well balanced. It tastes like a sour cocktail, even though the lemon is a small amount, but I guess the apple makes up for it. Wow, this is extremely nice. In the mid palette, it tastes so fruity. Like all kinds of fruits that are not there, like peach, pear. Probably they just jump out from the cognac and the Benedictine interacting with each other. This is delicious. Holy cow. And to say I'm not the biggest fan of a Benedictine, but by itself it says nothing together in many cocktails like the Vieux Carré and this one is just really good perfect perfect balance between acidity the sour the sweetness it's really great and complex 
depending on the cognac you're gonna use probably it's gonna push up the notes of the cognac in the foreground nothing else to say one of my favorite song by Facebook but anyway let's uh, say that uh, I hope you enjoyed this video please like subscribe please like subscribe comment down below share with anybody you like and don't like shake yourself a drink and hopefully i will see you next time cheers so c'est la vie means uh, that's life in french and the most famous version of that's life song is probably the one by frank that's sinatra life. the one i know personally is the one by david lee roth in his Eat Em and Smile album, I already talked about it in the Toffee Negroni video. So let's talk about something else. Let's talk about Frank Sinatra. Let's talk how another of his songs, Fly Me to the Moon, I love it. That's such a beautiful song. Of course, I got to know it from the Evangelion <laughs> because I'm such a nerd or otaku. Or I used to be. That, that's the funny thing about at least me being a, a fan of Japanese stuff. I was a biggest fan of Japanese culture before I came to Japan. And since I came to Japan, I kind of stopped looking at uh, Japanese stuff. I don't know. I guess when something is so far away you kind of idolize it and the opposite is true for something that's nearby i discovered that for example my river next to my hometown in italy is just amazing it's a beautiful river with uh, a great nature park and great for mountain bike riding. Also, the river that's nearby here in Tokyo, it's called Shakujigawa, and uh, in spring it becomes so beautiful with uh, sakura, cherry trees blossom. And I was like, well, yeah, let's go there, who cares? But apparently, after now it's 18 years I'm here, I realized how good it is. There is not many other places with such a great display of sakura trees. Yeah, sometimes the things that are close to you, because they are normal, because they are common, because they are easily accessible, they get less regard than something that's so far away. The same goes for Francia Corta. This wine that's made close by to my hometown in Italy, it's uh, made with a champagne method, like Metodo Classico, and uh, it's freaking amazing. But until my wife made me notice how good it was, when I was in Italy, I lived there, I was right next to it, and it just seemed normal. Now that I'm here in Japan, it's freaking good, it's really good, it's a good competitor to most champagne. Another example, Venezia, Venice. <laughs> at some point, I remember in, uh, I was a teenager, and I said, Oh, Venice sucks! And now I kind of understand what I was thinking. That was totally wrong. Venice is amazing. It's just that I went to Venice so many times, I got bored of it. I was like, yeah, Venice, well, it's normal, well, it's a city on the water, well, who cares? And now I'm here and everybody calls, ah, the Venice of uh, Japan, the Venice of North America, Copenhagen, the Venice of Northern Europe. What the hell? Nothing is close to Venice. Venice is Venice and it's insanely amazing. It's uh, just the teenager in me was like, oh, who cares, Venice, you yeah, have a build a city on the water, no, easy.
Okay, this is great. Except Harris Bar. Harris Bar sucks. I went to Harris Bar when I was in Venice. And I just went there. I didn't check the reviews. I just went there because I was... I want to be in the place where Hemingway was. And it's so bad. Don't go. They steal your money. They suck really. 